This is uh, Bob Flaws with another uh, YouTube segment brought to you by Blue Poppy. I almost said Blue, Blue Poppy segment brought to you by YouTube. Um, today, uh, what I'd like to talk about is another one of the famous doctors of Chinese medicine, one that is uh, you, you probably have never heard of, uh, and his name is Li Zhongzi. Li Zhongzi was uh, one of the late Ming dynasty uh, famous doctors in China, meaning the late 1500s, early 1600s. Uh, this uh, particular hundred years uh, here from the late uh, mid, mid 16th century to the mid 17th century uh, was a time of uh, great intellectual ferment. There were many, many uh, famous Chinese doctors of that time. It was a, a special, extraordinary uh, couple of generations there. Uh, Li Zhongzi was one of the members of uh, what's called the Warm Supplementation School, a school that uh, especially emphasized the, the uh, warming and invigoration of uh, kidney yang. But that's not what I'd like to talk about, uh, actually, in this little segment. The thing that I'd like you to remember Li Zhongzi for was that he was one of the first non-sectarian Chinese doctors of the, of the uh, uh, I can't really say modern, modern era, but, but certainly of uh, uh, the time of the Western Renaissance. Uh, prior to Li Zhongzi, there had developed in China a number of individual schools, like for instance, uh, in the Jinyuan dynasties before the Ming, we had the development of the uh, school of Attack and Purgation, uh, the School of Supplementing Earth, uh, the School of Enriching Yin, and the School of Cool and Cold Medicinals. And uh, these were only some of the famous schools that uh, were existed uh, uh, at the time of the Ming. But uh, many of the adherents of these schools were very sectarian in their approach, that if they were a member of this school, they paid no attention to any other school, maybe they actively dissed or criticized the other schools, maybe they even uh, fought battles in the street when the students met each other, uh, the teachers tended to badmouth each other, uh, people were card-carrying members of one school or another school. And, of course, that kind of sectarianism when it comes to intellectual things is not very useful. Maybe, maybe it's not very useful in any case when it comes to anything. But when it comes to the realm of ideas, and uh, especially medical ideas, that kind of sectarianism is, uh, is especially harmful, deleterious. So, uh, Li Zhongzi, in fact, is today remembered in China uh, as one of the first non-sectarian uh, Chinese doctors of, of the relatively later period, uh, and, and one of the first um, uh, syncretic, that's, that's the word I've been looking for for the last 30 seconds, one of the first uh, syncretic thinkers that Li Zhongzi said that uh, if uh, the patient presents a situation that matches a Shahan Lun pattern, then use the Shahan Lun. If the patient presents a situation that is best uh, treated by enriching yin, then use the school of enriching yin. If uh, the patient's uh, situation, however, suggests that uh, they really need the uh, uh, attack and purgation, then use that school of thought, uh, use that approach. Uh, so he was willing to use uh, the different schools that existed at his, his time in a fluid and flexible way, depending upon the case at hand, that he was not doctrinaire, that he didn't treat everyone with enriching yin or everyone with attack and purgation. And in fact, that was one of the problems up until that time in China, that, that many Chinese doctors up until Li Zhongzi uh, and, and his group of, of, of fellow, his group of peers, his fellow practitioners, uh, people did uh, apply simplistic approaches uh, on a pro forma or rote basis. 
everyone gets attack and purgation if you're a member of that school. Well, the important thing here is that then the Zhengzi sort of set the stage for the development of Chinese medicine into the Qing dynasty where many Chinese doctors accepted this syncretic approach of taking the best of all the different schools and then using whatever is appropriate in the case at hand. And that's really then uh, what led to the development of treatment based on pattern discrimination. That if the pattern is uh, one of uh, replete heat accumulation, then okay, precipitation is the right thing. But if the pattern is really one of yin vacuity, then enriching yin is the right thing. And if it's one of yang vacuity, then warm supplementation is the right thing. So uh, Li Zhengzi, we can see, is one of the key thinkers in the development of contemporary Chinese medicine, meaning Chinese medicine which bases treatment on the discrimination of patterns. So uh, although you may never have heard of Li Zhengzi, keep, keep his name in mind, but even more importantly, keep in mind the, the fact that, that the beginnings of pattern discrimination can, can be traced really to uh, the end of the Ming Dynasty and the beginning of the, the Qing Dynasty. That, that this is not something brand new, but that it is a, uh, a several hundred year evolution stemming from the end of the Ming Dynasty.